Aloha, everyone, and welcome to another episode of our show, Staying Young at Heart. My name is Maria Mera, and I'm uh, your host, as well as a financial advisor with Edward Jones. And um, you're in for a treat today. We have uh, the best person to talk about how to stay young at heart, and it's a cardiologist, Miguel Vasquez. Uh, Miguel, thank you very much for joining us today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for inviting me. Um, well, of course, my pleasure. Uh, please tell us what is a cardiologist. A cardiologist nowadays is a very complex definition because there are several types of cardiologists. There are the general cardiologists, non-invasive cardiologists, interventional okay. cardiologists, and electrophysiologic cardiologists. And there is okay. a group now that we also have a, like a preventive cardiology. That is a kind of significant So what, what uh, type of cardiologist do you fall into? I was the interventional cardiologist. That means putting stents, pacemakers, defibrillators, and kind of thing, doing active things. Nowadays, the interventional cardiologists also put valves to replace the rocking ones, uh, okay. two catheters. Is, is that the intervention that we do in interventional cardiology? So what, what um, made you be a cardiologist? The alternatives were not so good. One was to be a priest, <laughs> and the other was to be a military. <laughs> okay. I decided oh, to study very hard to become a cardiologist. <laughs> Takes too many years, but it's, it's fun. Uh, so uh, that, that, I didn't know that. that that's a good one. So uh, did you study? A and again, um, before we continue, let's let's disclose you're from Peru. I'm from Spain. Um, we are speaking Spanish, and we are in Hawaii, which is all funny. But um, so what made yes. you um, what made you come to the U.S.? Uh, mainly because my professors in Peru said, you know, I should go further in my education and improve whatever I had. And they recommended. However, my choices were like, we don't know in Peru. Uh, I chose Cleveland, that is in the Midwest, cold, but this Ohio. The, best car the best cardiology at, at that time, oh. even nowadays was there. That's why I went to Cleveland. And then That's from funny. there I can move. Yeah. So did you did you like Cleveland after living there? Or? I was excited because I never have seen a snow and cold weather, but uh, uh, I was mostly so, li living in the hospital. Therefore, I was not even out. Too much. Just as an anecdote, um, I got a, um, a scholarship in the, the College of Worcester, who that happens to be also in Ohio, and uh, I went back to Spain during Christmas. And when I came back in January, it was like when I um, arrive and they open the door of the of the the gate of the uh, um, of the airplane, I thought they were opening like the fridge, and I was just jumping in the fridge. So Sorry. yeah, for <laughs> that's true. It's true. It's very cold. And then, so what? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, please. Then you see we are in Hawaii. I always say a sign of intelligence is to move west. I moved from Cleveland <laughs> to Wisconsin to Chicago, California. Now I am in Hawaii. I'm proving my theory anyway. That uh, little by little. Do you yeah. do you think that the weather? Um, I have my own opinion here, but do you think the weather is good for your heart? Like the warmer the weather, the healthier your heart is. At this uh, factor, especially, yes. Not only because the warmer, because the weather we have in Hawaii uh, invites you to be out doing things. Compared with, uh, let's see, Cleveland, Chicago, in the winter, you don't go out. You are in the yeah. bars and a place closed. You have a lot of uh, conferences talking, but you don't exercise. Uh, yeah. The weather in Hawaii kind of invites you to go out. And that more, is, more outdoor activities than exactly. versus being with a blanket and having a hot chocolate <laughs> and full disclosure i'm outside so my apologies if um if there is noise or um but it is beautiful and in the uh, in the spirit of being healthy 
I'm outside today. <laughs> Great, yes. So okay. Miguel, we, we hear the news um, about this vaccine, Johnson & Johnson or AstraZeneca uh, creating thrombosis or clots. Um, tell us the concern about that and um, what in your experience um, should, we should uh, be concerned about. Well, uh, as you know, I'm cardiologist, not uh, indirectly I got from my fellow infectious disease and from the uh, articles that we our organization published. But as Johnson and Johnson and AstraZeneca had an usual number of cases of uh, clotting, uh, some problems with the blood would coagulate and produce uh, side effects. And they are pausing the usage until this is uh, clarified. And I think it's a good reason. Unfortunately, uh, that will diminish the number of vaccines available to the population. It's going to delay our protection in the long range. However, it mm -hmm. will eventually happen. How, how, dangerous, how dangerous for those who already got the vaccine and uh, they might be concerned of what is going to happen? It, if it hasn't happened, then they are fine. They are, okay. It's just the, the early phase when they got. Okay, and uh, and it seems like it's more um, women of a certain age, uh, which brings me to back to our hearts, right? Is uh, are are there a gender or an age specific that we should be more concerned um, about taking care of our of our health, specifically our hearts? Well, as you know, uh, we are different, Venus and Mars, in many ways. And uh, 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 there are certain studies shows more problems in the women. Uh, depends on the age group, but as, as the women get older, I think the, the things level because the hormonal protection is not there and they get the same kind of risk factors like uh, men. In some yeah. Way. Uh, but in spite of that, women tend to live longer than men. Why Lucky us. <laughs> yes. Therefore, if you see in the nursing homes, there's more women than men. Um, and that tells us that uh, in some way, the women either they follow recommendations better or they have some kind of inner protection that lasts longer. What are important things for us to, that we can prevent and take care of? That's a very important thing. There are things that we can change. Like, uh, one thing we cannot change at this moment, in the future probably, your genes. If your parents mm -hmm. have heart disease at the age of 50, you are in bad situation because you probably have high levels of uh, high risks of developing something at that age. Uh, therefore, the only thing we can change is the, some, some things that we can change, like, uh, for example, lifestyle is the basis mm -hmm. of prevention. Uh, a lifestyle, something should start early. Uh, if we start when you already have blockages and you have surgery, it's less, possible that you will get benefit. You will prevent progression, but you already got the disease. Give, us, give, us, more, um, give us more specific examples, like lifestyle, is it like exercise? What, what would be a good yeah. exercise for? Because we also hear athletes in the top of their careers who have uh, heart issues. Um, exactly. So what, what would be a good um, average recommendation that we should all follow? Okay, I'll give you the, the, the basic uh, knowledge. For example, the, the cholesterol levels, at this point, we know uh, the cause of blockage, uh, causing blockages in your arteries, in the neck, the heart, the brain. And one factor is the bad cholesterol, we call LDL. The LDL is high, the chance of having problems is higher. And now we have medicines that make it lower. 
But this is the thing. If you have the LDL high, the longest, if you start to have high LDL when you were 20, 22. By the time you get 60, it has caused a lot, lot of damage. And that was proven in the soldiers of Vietnam that they were, they were 25, 20, that died. And they cut their arteries. They found a lot of cholesterol already. Because at, in those days, they will eat, like many of us, a lot of hamburgers <laughs> and spam and that in those days. Therefore, uh, when I say to change things is with intention to decrease these bad levels. And what makes those changes is, for example, like you say, exercise. It has to mm -hmm. be a regular exercise because it triggers some uh, metabolic changes that make this LDL go down. But the opposite of LDL is the HDL. We don't have too many medicines to make the good cholesterol yeah. HDL to go up, but exercise so we, that. We need to look at the LDL, but also the ratio between the LDL and the HDL. Uh, well, the HDL is, is, is one, one factor that you need to consider. Yeah, the ratio. Mm -hmm. and, and like I said, the HDL is more difficult to treat with medicines. We don't have too many medicines. Mm -hmm. What about, uh, what you were saying exercise. What about our eating habits? Is it, we, oh. should, we, should we be vegetarians or? That is the basics. They just did a study in United Kingdom comparing, uh, like 9,000 people, I think, comparing vegetarians, uh, fish and chicken, and meat eaters. Although the study was having more number of people eating meat, therefore it's kind of there's some question about the study. But at the end, the people that has been eating meat at higher percentage of cardiac events, stroke, heart attacks, high blood pressure. The vegetarians were at the low. They still have it, but lower level. Therefore, that proves you that. And in relation to meat, there are variations to it. There's another study that shows that they compare different meats, the process, process the meat the sausages, the spam, and uh, all those things that are processed are much worse than regular meat. Mm -hmm. Therefore, there's some variations on that. But the vegetarians, for sure, they have advantage. The one that they talk more about is the Mediterranean diet. It has to have nuts. Nuts are very important for many factors and uh, uh, fruits good, unless you're diabetic and you diabetes, you can have to avoid certain sweet fruits. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the- Olive oil. Uh, olive oil olive is very important. <laughs> Should replace all the other oils. Well, some of the other vegetable oils. Here in Hawaii, sometimes they use a lot of coconut oil. Mm -hmm. And it's not very good because the oils are bad, depending on the length of the, chain, the oil change. The longest uh, change in oils is a palm oil. That is part of many products. Second is coconut, coconut oil. And as you go down like sesame oil is less and olive oil is less. It's a shorter chain. That's why it's less harmful. Yeah. Okay, well, those are those are great advice, and I'm really glad that you said the olive oil. Um, I'm, I'm, people tell me olive oil runs through my veins, not not blood. <laughs> um, also, also, make your hair looking good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It goes. It looks a lot of <laughs> I don't know. vitamin D. <laughs> that must be the 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 the, the wind also. <laughs> well, um, talking about wine, that's very important. There's many many advices about using. Uh, red, drink, red wine or white wine or it doesn't really matter it really doesn't matter much but there is a a, a, a little more studies about red wine because there are some mm -hmm. components but any any liquor will do or alcohol but it's so, a curve 
if you drink more than two glasses a day. Uh, that sounds uh, like more than what I drink. <laughs> that's that's more than what I drink a, a year. But, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, that's a good that's a good uh, just measure to have. Um, Miguel, so let's say I'm I never had an issue with my heart. I don't have any issues with, and I live a healthy lifestyle. Do I need to go to the cardiologist? Uh, that's a good question because we have a lot of arguments. Uh, like uh, sometimes you get in the mail, some companies saying, we're going to do a screening for you free. And they check your arteries in your neck, check your heart and your cholesterol. And those people are without symptoms. And some of the arguments is that we should not treat things unless there is something symptomatic. And the other is the economic. We will, if, if we want every person go to cardiologists to prevent things, we will have not enough cardiologists and the amount of money that the society will spend paying cardiologists to be checked is too much compared with the benefits. But you, like I say, your parents have heart disease and you ate or you smoke and you have uh, obesity, those cases really should check the cardiologist to, to, to get advice how to modify those things. Yeah, not everybody. We're going to take a very quick break here and uh, then we will be right back with Miguel Vázquez, our favorite cardiologist. Okay. Welcome back to our show, Staying Young at Heart, and we have our best cardiologist here, Miguel Vasquez. Miguel, thank you for joining us. Um, what makes a person or a doctor a good cardiologist? What are the qualities that um, we should be looking for? One that uh, keeps up with the progression of medicine. Cardiologist that doesn't study, keep studying, no good because Cardiology is changing so much, and you have to be sure that he is going to conferences, he deals with universities. And the other one that I think is very important in cardiology is to be honest. You cannot uh, sometimes uh, lie about what the person has. You have the, the abilities to express uh, the concern you have about somebody without hurting the people, but you should be more honest, tell them what, what you think. That is important for the person to, to know what they have. So um, I, I assume like these days, right, back to COVID-19 and, and how we are being challenged with social distancing and uh, going to hospitals or um, how bad do you think it's been for people to not have their conditions treated? I didn't get that. How bad is what? So do you, do you think uh, people are being affected or not being treated by their heart condition if uh, during COVID-19 or, or things have been normal? Uh, no, COVID-19, we discovered that uh, the ones that die, we found that the heart has 
evidence of inflammation uh, by the virus and other changes. It's an interesting new, new concept. Uh, therefore, a person that has already a pre existing cardiac problem will suffer more and end up dying because, on top of the pre, pre COVID condition, comes the COVID effect, affecting the heart more, and then the, that's why they, they don't survive, many of them. Fortunately, it's not a high percentage, but uh, uh, they do uh, suffer more than ones that have a pre existing hypertension. Uh, people that have had a heart attacks, people with pulmonary problems also mm -hmm. end up with heart troubles. That's kind of thing. So our, but my question is more like, are cardiologists having an issue just trying to treat patients via Zoom or, or not even uh, being able to see their patients? Yeah, that's very difficult. My brother just retired because he couldn't take it. He, he was used to see people. And the same with cardiology. I mean, many times you get more information seeing them. Uh, yeah. But you have to adapt. It's nothing that we can yeah. change for a while. And, and it's, it's you just have to make up for those things. So how, how long have you been retired? Two years now, practically. Do you, do you feel like you're healthier? I'm healthier because I am playing golf and walking four hours, five hours there, and uh, I'm doing more active things. The only thing is with COVID, I have to be eating more because, you know, I don't cook. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, I go to restaurants. But then in restaurants, I only have trouble with restaurants uh, in Hawaii because many of them has uh, salty food. And oh yes, high blood pressure, and it's not because they add it because some of the dishes are salty, like uh, udon, or ramen, or something like that. Yeah, and, and just the maybe. even just the soy, right? It's very very salty, and that is one of the problems. But in reality, uh, the stress of getting up at two in the morning and four in the morning and not sleeping many hours is That's another thing in prevention is. Sleeping good number of hours is very good. Uh, so nothing, nothing, nothing new. Not, nothing new. You're not breaking. A, you're not breaking news. It's um, exercise, diet, sleeping habits, no stress. Um, Basic. I, I, I could. I could be a cardiologist. <laughs> exactly. That's it. I charge for that. <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. And that, 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 that will be. Yeah. I'm so, sure you can give better advice about. Food that I can do. It. Uh, yeah. No, I don't, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> so, um, but what are the conditions that if I if I feel something, I should just run to my physician or my cardiologist? Well, the young age is not too many, but uh, when you get over 45, you have a pressure feeling like heaviness, and you don't know what it is. Don't think like many people say, it's my indigestion or my thing, my, my chest wall. Kind of check with somebody before discarding it. That's one of the main things. The young people, the main problem is rapid heartbeat, irregular heartbeats, kind of more or less. And so one more, one more question for you uh, regarding medicine um, in the U.S. Is, is there, how, how, how do you see it moving forward or um, what's your take on medicine in the U.S.? Medicine? Well, yeah, I mean, just, in, just in general, medicine in the U.S. Oh, I think it's the best. I, I, I am really uh, very proud of uh, the medical uh, community because like nowadays, they have responded to this COVID very well. Some of them have died from it, more in other countries. But in the United States, the medicine is really uh, best, I would say. Uh, it's, it's not the, the cheapest. That, not the cheapest. No, but, no, yeah. that, that is a different issue. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. But the other thing is, you go to an emergency room here in the United States, and they will treat you before asking you what is your credit card or what is your that's 
and then later they will on. send you a couple of uh, thousand dollars <laughs> later <laughs> on you pay for it but at least they treat you yeah yeah, yeah. well that's, that's how it should be uh is, isn't isn't it like that in peru or no like uh, my wife had a, a symptoms of appendicitis my friend, the gastroenterologist, saw her. I said, okay, I'll call in the surgeon. We're taking you by ambulance to the clinic, a private clinic. They would not let her out of the private, of the ambulance until I put my credit card and deposit $5,000. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's the way it is in many That's a, Okay, then uh, let's, let's stay in the US. <laughs> well, any, any further advice that you can give our viewers? and uh, that you can, that you want to share with our audience. Yeah, the one that I, I'm, I'm still very uh, uh, surprised that people still smoke. I think that's something you sh should avoid. I mean, paca loco maybe is not as bad as smoking, but uh, smoking that, is bad. That's funny because we've had a, a, a specialist in ventilators. I think that was our previous um, episode, if anyone wants to see it. And uh, I asked for his advice and he said the same. He said, don't, don't smoke and don't vape. Because don't vape what? is also, don't vape. Like this new, the, uh, oh, yeah, the, yeah, that the too. cigarettes. Yep, yeah, it's, uh, that's, that's not good either. Um, well, Miguel, we hope to uh, be as healthy as you and uh, we'll keep your advice. And thank you so much for joining us. I'll see you in the boulevard running. <laughs> I'll see okay. you in, the, in La Moana, probably. Yes. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you to all our viewers for joining thank us. You. And uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Aloha, everyone. Aloha and bye bye.